Apparently, Sam Cedar and Dennis Prager had a debate. On everyone's favorite subject, Israel. Uh, this just uploaded a second ago. I, you know, I can't resist. Now, obviously, you know, if, 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 if you're watching this, you should subscribe to the Majority Report with Sam Cedar, the, the channel that's far larger than mine. You know, you should go over there, too. An important message. What? We're going to be on conference call with maybe uh, Prager. Prager? How much time do we got? Boy Prager's. Hello? Hello? Is this Ron Reagan? Yeah, we're on in a minute. Prager we're on in about a minute. On the sale of Radio okay. Network. We're doing some break. It's one minute and 15 seconds. This is a great you? birthday gift. Thank yeah, you, Reagan. You want me to just go right into it? I told him that my son is in college and he's attended college. Well. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. My name is Ron. Well, Ron. I'll just let you be Ron. Okay. You want me to do it like last time? Yeah. So nice of you to help out a smaller channel. Me. I know. Sam is pretending to be Ron. Okay, that's the framework. Sam loves these debates. Oh, thank you. It's a good birthday present. What has happened to the Democrats? Enjoy the beat while we get to the actual call. I'm not skipping this. show on the Salem Radio Network. Return some break. 1-8 Prager 776-877-243-7776. Albany, Oregon. Ron, hello. Uh, hi, uh, Dennis. Uh, thanks so much for taking my call. Um, I, I think I told your, your screener that uh, my, my kid is in college and there are protests going on there. And needless to say, Thanksgiving was a little bit rough. Go on. Well, um, my uh, my child, I don't want to say the... I want to say right off the bat that, um, you know, sort of judging from a small segment here, but uh, Dennis Prager really doesn't have that radio charisma, does he? I feel like so many of the projects that, like, conservative grifters do, you know, any Daily Wire types, whatever, a lot of them they just kind of get pushed into, so they're just there for it, you know? The, the college that they go to, because I, I you know... I, I don't want them uh, to be chased down or anything. But uh, my concern is that my son uh, doesn't appreciate what's going on in Israel at all and uh, doesn't understand what the dynamics are there. And it is uh, increasingly a problem is what's going on in these campuses. That's right. Um, Anti-Semitism is a problem uh, in this country. It is rising. I'm not sure if I subscribe totally to the idea that it's a function of secularism because you know obviously the spanish inquisition we had a lot of anti-semitism that existed before any type of uh, secular movement in, in the united states it is i make it clear in the column you're right american christianity was totally different from european christianity this is very true and you should take his word for it american christianity has never been anti-semitic please never look into the history of this never google the subject just keep moving forward. Remember that Dennis Prager's entire bit, in addition to trying to convince his wife that he should be legally allowed to f*** her, is the whole Judeo-Christian thing. It's him and Ben Shapiro, but uh, Dennis Prager really hams on this, basically. Where his whole thing is like, okay, yeah, I'm a Jew, but don't let that keep you from accepting me into your Christian nationalist fascist ethno state that's lit that's the whole thing that's the entire thing it's basically like can i convince the fascists that we're basically just the same like is there is there a way for me to sort of jewishly ex like enter into communion with the nazis you know uh the far right uh, yeah in a way kind of like a jewish blair white that's actually true yeah i completely agree with that yeah now, of course, 
in a way, you know, Dennis Prager is correct in the sense that you can be a Christian or a Jew and be fascist. You know, I really don't think it stops you either way. I don't think there's that much of a difference fundamentally between religious uh, fundamentalist authoritarians, whether they're Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Hindu, whatever. It's just he has to make such silly claims to justify his premise, you know? Like, American Christians have never been anti-Semitic. He he says, you know, desperately holding his hands up to protect his face when the brown shirts start walking the streets again. Like, oh, no, no, no. Don't you know? You're a Christian nationalist, right? Like, uh, you guys have never been anti-Semitic. Please don't look that up. <laughs> Sorry. But, I mean... This was a Judeo-Christianity. It was pro-Jewish. That's why I read to you John Adams. It was a committed Christian. Well, that's true. That Jefferson but, I mean... and, and Jefferson... Go on. Well, I can tell you that, I mean, just, you know, I mean, uh, when my my uh, my my parents and my grandparents came over. Lou York one, I think that you think you're being nuanced when in reality you're massively boiling the conflict down to the milk toast centrist. Both sides are wrong. Bullshit. That is actually like the lowest IQ take you can have on this. Anyway. Oh, fun. Fun fact about the founding fathers. Alexander Hamilton uh actually was super pro-jewish and uh believed that jews actually were the chosen people i think he, he was raised in a jewish community in the um was it the caribbean wherever wherever he was you know in the in one of the colonies he was also a cringe monarchist yeah he was also basically a monarchist hamilton wanted to establish the u.s as a jewish holy land dude he could have done jewish mormonism that would have been f funny dude it, like, like it's lit, like all timeline shit. It's like Jewish Mormons think that like Moses was real, but he parted like I don't know the Delaware or something. And that like the people <laughs> that that's actually a really good, yeah. Uh, in the 1800s, uh, they had to change their name. They couldn't get insurance. This was not a function. That they were very. Uh... They were very pious. Oh, so you're you're Jewish. Okay, that's interesting. So the fact is, however, that compared. To you're right. Compared to a truly perfect society, it was a failure. Compared to every other society, why did they flee their society and come to America? If you would have asked your grandparents, are you happy you came to America, even though it was harder to get insurance, they probably would have laughed at you. Oh, well, no, of course. They is, it, is, is Prager, I'm sorry, is Prager's argument that the anti-Semitism here is better than it was in Nazi Germany. Also, Jewish refugees tried to escape Germany before the Holocaust and got turned away from a lot of countries, including America. They left because of oh, sorry. pogroms, but they weren't secular in, in Russia at that time or Lithuania. No, or you're Vilnius right. Or... I said I've said all of my life to American Jews, my fellow Jews, that the European Christianity was not the same as American Christianity. This what, is it, what does this mean, by the way? I, I gotta know. I gotta know what this means. What do you mean, like Catholicism versus Protestant? What do we What do we mean? I really want to know. The Christians that put Torah uh, Torah script on on the Liberty Bell, right? That may, had you study Hebrew. That that said the greatest contributions were made by Jews, like I read to you from John Adams. Okay. This was a different country. This was a different form of Christianity. Well, I agree. I mean, I agree. I mean, I, you know, you have someone like John Hagee speaking at the, um, the rally uh, for Israel, I think, was frankly an abomination. I mean, I wasn't. Bosh, Israel started funding Hamas when it was a peaceful charity and the PLO was so. so, so wait, no, no, no. SOS 84, you need to read up more on that. It's not just that. You can literally look at the shit that Netanyahu didn't said with his associations. It's not, it's not just that, okay? For uh, for uh, John Hagee speaking there, he has a record. I was, I was. Well, even John McCain. Me. I thought it was a great choice. I know him he, very well. Back in a moment. Okay. That well, that's it. That's the that's the length of time before an ad break. Dude, you guys are so f lucky. Live streamers have slightly more shame than 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 ad radio advertisers. Shit. Should I hit the ad button every time we do an I should. I'm going to. Beep. I did it. The Dennis Prager Show returns in five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. What the f is 
this? I don't think it's gonna trigger copyright when it's this f***ed up sounding, but I guess I'll skip it. Fascinating. A moment here to think about it. Sean is baffled. It's fascinating. Wait, this Sean, isn't Dennis? I don't understand. It's sleep. Sleep. Hello, sleep. Folks, a lot of you have problems falling asleep or staying asleep. My heart goes out to you. It's not a problem I've ever had. I'm very lucky, and I know it. But if you need to, this is a great product. On occasions that I have taken it, like, for example, when I went to London and I wanted to sleep on the plane, this thing is fantastic. Anything Relief Factor does, I'm a big fan of. So, yeah, with how sleepy he sounds, I think um, I think leaning into like uh, doing ad reads for sleep meds or anything associated with it is actually pretty good. You know, that works. If you uh, need to sleep or stay asleep, try it. <laughs> Go to relief. <laughs> if you uh, need to sleep or stay asleep, try it. Go to relieffactor.com and order sleep for restorative, regenerative. Sleep. Me too, man. Relief Factor. All the time. So my column this week is essentially that when America was more Christian, Jews were more secure. So there are two issues with my call. This is a really important call. I'm very you called because I I have a lot of thoughts on what you're saying. So. Okay. This is uh, man. Sam really picked the right topic for a prolonged engagement, huh? Ron in Oregon, and there are two issues. One is that his son, he uh, is a Jewish family, and his son has been participating in anti-Israel protests at his college. And the other is that he doesn't fully agree with me because look, after all, look at all the anti-Semitism in, in Europe, which was done by Christians, and he's absolutely right. But as I've said all of my life, American Christianity was not European Christianity. And Jews, the best place Jews have ever lived outside of their own land has been the United States of America. I think, um, hmm, for a long period of time, Jews were generally safer in Arab countries, I think, than they were in, um, in Europe. I've seen some evidence that claim, and I've heard from people that I trust that it's true, but I haven't looked into it very extensively myself. I think that it, like, it, there has been more anti-Semitism in Europe than there has been in America. I think a big part of that is because different societies have different, like, minority groups to pick on. And in America, for us, it was Native Americans, black people, obviously, the slaves we brought over, and to an extent mexicans because obviously we you know share a border with them and they're they're very present uh you know near us yeah and, and later the chinese though i think to it to a lesser extent and there was the irish and the italians and such i i think that we have i, I think that american white supremacy and white christian supremacy has just been framed against different groups for different reasons it's not that we're not anti-Semitic and haven't been anti-Semitic. It's that, you know, we just set ourselves up for scapegoating a different group or a different set of groups. You know, what I say now is the most anti-Semitic era in American history. Oh, God, no, no, no. That would have to be... My guess would be the 1930s, just because the American Nazi Party, you know, was... That would be my guess, yeah. Yeah, Rockwell shit, yeah, in the, in the lead-up. A lot, one of, one of the big reasons why anti-Semitism is such a huge no-no in America today, like, conceptually, like, it's a big accusation, is, um, man, Hitler really made being an anti-Semite uncool. Rockwell was in the 60s? Okay, then my, my brain is mush, but I mean the 30s. Yeah, essentially, Hitler just made it le less cool. Same with eugenics, basically. Made it look cringe. So your last comment was that you were distressed that at the rally in Washington for Israel, they had Pastor Hagee speak, correct? How does yes, India treat right. Jews living there I now? Mean, I, no was clue. Never, and the, I never totally agreed with John McCain about all things, but when he um, distanced himself in 2008 from uh, Hagee, I thought that was the right thing to do. And the reason? 
Well, I don't think the idea that, and this is what Hagee believes, obviously not what I believe, or I would imagine not what you believe, is that um, Hitler was sent by God to push Jews to Israel. And I mean, I understand the Christian prophecy that uh, we as Jews are a part of that. Didn't we still do a lot of eugenics afterwards? Like, did we ever stop? Well, eugenicist explanations or justifications for um, various policies have continued to this day, even though they've gotten kind of more shrouded. However, eugenics prior to World War II wasn't just like, like you have to understand, be before Hitler made it cringe, eugenics wasn't just like a right-wing thing to believe in. It was what like every educated gentleman progressive or otherwise believed it like basically every white guy with a top hat was like mm, yes of course the mm, selective husbandry of the strongest men with the strongest women could produce someone immune to polio and that was like that was like everyone believed that like it was like there were a lot of people who were doing the like racist skull shape shit that wasn't exactly uncommon but even relatively progressive people up to like like I, I mean from like late 19th century to, to hitler basically the idea was like that eugenics was a force potentially for good like some people wanted to use it for bad some people wanted to use it for good you know whatever and then hitler did his whole thing and people thought wow this actually looks like really bad like who oh boy now i'm really reconsidering my views on the potential viability of eugenics haha <laughs> And then, uh, it, it, yeah, it really cut it down. And, and, and obviously since then, like, there are still eugenicists and there are still people who have eugenicist opinions, but it's, you know, it, it has not uh, regained its popularity in the, in, the, in, the, in the public forum. And many eugenicists also oppose discrimination based eugenics. Yeah, there was this weird time period where the progressive thing was to be like, as you can see from the catheter tilt and the shape of the ear, this fellow suffers from retardation, a product of his Irish-Polish blood, no doubt. Fear not, he's not violent, just a little confused. In uh, a, a good society would provide this man everything he needs to live a clean and safe life, you know, and, and that, like, that was, I, I'm doing a bit, but, like, this was a thing. Does it, did, did people who understand, you, like, you agree with me, right? Like, the, that was, like, the progressive mind. The progressive mind was, like, we should go into the street, and we should find people who have this eyebrow shape. These people are retarded. Then, we should use state resources to make sure that they always have, like, Tonka blocks to play with, you know? We should make sure they always have Legos, all right? I keep Okay, people with this forehead shape and this widow's peak are biologically prone to burglary. So we simply keep them away from private property, right over here, yes, right over here, under this big estate with no locked doors so they won't be tempted by their genes. And, you know, and, and we'll keep them happy. <laughs> I am mildly overstating this. Didn't they used to breed slaves like animals during slavery in the U.S.? Wow, tone shift, Tempest. Thanks, Tempest. I'm talking about progressive late 19th century eugenics, not not progressive slave eugenics. Thanks, Tempest. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, that was not the uh, progressive uh, thing to do at the time, though. You know, that was that was bad. Shouldn't do that. But like, uh, yeah, not woke of them at all. But 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 yeah, but yes, eugenics was widely uh, popular. The the only point I'm making is that like basically every educated group of genteel Europeans thought that eugenics could be used for some kind of social good. Some people wanted it to elevate the white race, and some people wanted it to be able to determine from your skull shape whether or not you were a criminal, so that you could be placed in a ward beforehand. All right, moving on. But not necessarily in the best way, but um. I guess my biggest concern is um, we just had the, uh, the, the greatest attack on Jews since the Holocaust take place. And I look at Israel as a place that was um, founded, at least in part, to protect Jews. And I think that after 75 years, what we're looking at is a situation where that project has failed. 
And I think in part it's failed because of the way that um, Israel has gone about it. Okay, so we you know now into the third uh, third arena. They're all related. Exactly. Let me just say this about John Hagee. John, first of all, uh-huh. I never ever judge people on the basis of their beliefs. I- Fascinating. That's okay. I'm sure you're annoyed when Christians think you're going to hell because you don't believe in Christ. So why are you annoyed with John Hagee for his religious beliefs? So this is what a Jew who's hell-bent on allying with the farthest right contingent of American Christians has to do and say. He has to appeal to the concept of religious tolerance to argue that you shouldn't judge a person for believing that Hitler was sent to Earth by God to send Jews to Jerusalem. That's that's the level you have to be on. If your job is this whole Judeo-Christian bit, like forever, you know, uh, then that <laughs> this is the kind of shit you have to cook. Bro burning some water over here. Oh my god. I can't judge. No, no, no. Guys, guys, guys. Look at literally anything Dennis Prager has ever done, okay? He is perfectly okay with judging people for their beliefs. He just doesn't want to criticize super far-right Christians. That's it. That is it. I also remember him pulling this bit with lollycons, if I remember correctly. Hold on. So, it's Nazism and uh, pedophilia, which are the two things that he goes out for. One second. Um... I think it was this. Suppose a man says, a child. Now, I, I deny that. I think that pornography prevents me from acting out sexually on a child. Now, I, I deny that. I think that pornography inflames us to then want to act those fantasies out. And I think there's good studies that back that up. But surely you wouldn't say to the man who views animated child pornography, that's not bad so long as you don't act it out. Wouldn't you want to help this poor sick dude? Yes, I would, but I'm thrilled that he's not acting it out. I mean, Agreed. Okay. Of course. Well, that's big. Yeah. We're both thrilled big, huge. that he might have a... <laughs> that's just not... Kids, huge if true. ...poor substitute, but it is a substitute, if that were the case. No child is being used. Yeah. It's all animated. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and he uh, for what it's worth, I'm sure this guy, the other guy Dennis is talking to, is a dipshit. However, I think what he's saying here is true. The evidence that I've seen indicates that, like, the it's it, you know when people say like uh, I'm gonna like punch a pillow and it's gonna get this anger out of my system. That's not actually how the brain works. The brain isn't like a vat of feelings that gets expended. It's an engine that revs up. So if you like, for example, to to like use the obvious like like clear example here, like. People who consume actual CP, it does not make them less of an actual threat to children. Like, I'm pretty sure the research is like, all it does is make you, like, aspirational or fantasize about the real thing. Which makes sense, like, I guess, logically. So anyway, I'm sure this this guy has plenty of bad opinions, but I think he's correct on that. Would you would you use the word evil of animated child pornography? Because no, I, I certainly I, I would. No, I would use evil only with behavior. That's where we might differ, f- yeah. forgetting the sex issue. You can't be evil... You didn't do evil if you thought evil. You did if evil I'm if you committed. To animated... Dennis Prager found a sick dojin with Kujo Jotaro in it, uh, and only afterwards realized that he's canonically seventeen, despite being seven feet tall and built like uh, a brick shit house. And he he's defending this. He's he's got his feet firmly planted on the ground. Okay. Pictures of pornography. I'm not doing something evil. That's correct. Yeah, I think that's I think that's despicable. Yeah. Really? Yes, of course. Who is being hurt? You have to have a victim. Oh, I'll tell you. There's a... Oh, dear. All right. If well, indeed, that's what he said. I have reviewed it. Hentai is now a Judeo-Christian value. That is unironically true. Yes. The principal thing my therapist has been telling me for years is to hit thing to let my anger out. Is that not actually how it works? Has your therapist really been saying that? I think the most charitable interpretation of that is that if you have feelings of aggression, it's possible to positively channel those into a constructive exercise like boxing or 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 some kind of working out or whatever but the point isn't to let your aggression out the point is to take the aggression and use that energy and to do something with it 
that is better for you, uh, you know, physically and psychologically. So I, I think that's the thing. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a psychologist. It's not fully clear to me, but let's say he said that God sent Hitler. My father, who was an Orthodox. Jew and fought uh, fought Hitler in in the U.S. Navy for three years, believed that God sent Hitler because he couldn't believe that the Holocaust just happened and God watched it. There, there, there are well, a lot that's of Jews. A, yes, uh, but that is a that is okay. A, so 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 fine. It's almost as though um, it's really weird and kind of f***ed up that religious people sort of like have a free pass to give religious justification to historical events or anything that happens. You know. It's kind of like the the big history civilization version of when something really f***ed up happens and a person is like, yeah, God is testing me. They're not. <laughs> You're just going through a rough time, man. So so what exactly, how, how remarkably different was my father's view? I don't agree with my father, but it doesn't matter. It, it is, it, it, I, as I said, I don't, I judge beliefs, but I don't judge people by their beliefs. Okay. So John Hagee has been one of the most pro-Jewish, pro-Israel figures in American, in American life. He has founded the largest organization of Christians. It is the Kufi Christians well, United yes, for no, Israel. I know I that. But Dennis, okay. that's, that actually so relates to my other point. Good? Because, because, no, because it, I do think it, it, that yeah. intent... I do think in I think he means belief solely in the context of religion. Yeah, maybe read some uncharitable Quran verses to Dennis Prager and and, and wait to see if uh yeah, you know, get get line up some like Hamas, Taliban, ISIS guys and be like, "Ah, here here are a bunch of men who believe that it is their Allah given duty to purge you from the earth." Now, please refrain from judging them as they do so. You know, like obviously it's bullshit. He just doesn't want to criticize far-right Christians. Vosh, I gotta ask real quick, why not hate the sinner? Like, what if they suck? Um, the whole hate the sin, love the sinner thing has always been bullshit, obviously, because a person who sins a lot, like a sinner who sins a lot, is doing the sins. They are the maker of the sin. You know, kind of difficult for that hate to transfer. I get it, or to keep it from transferring. I, 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 I get the logic where everyone does bad things, and we do. It's, it's unavoidable. We're human. We, we're fallible. Um, and from like, at least the Catholic perspective, it's like every human sins, every human can commit sin, but let's not believe that like innately shapes them or whatever, you know, like that innately defines who they are. And I think that's conceptually good to believe in. Yeah. You know, in, in a way it's, it's, it's kind of utilitarian sort of like in a, in a distant sense where it's like, you know, you, you judge the act. And while people do commit acts, you know, let's not be too essentialist about it. Obviously, in reality, religious people are essentialist as f You know, obvi obviously, in reality, your average American Protestant will sneer when the homeless person on the street corner asks them for money and, you know, like, then quietly comment to their husband, like, you know, these degenerates should get a job. Why should I give them handouts? You know, so, like, whatever. None of it matters. Whatever. Intent is important here so it is true that we we uh, you know that israel has a lot of support from uh kufi and other uh christian zionists but they want the jews there so that they go through hellfire and i also know that you know the netanyahu That's not true. the netanyahu that true. the Net, no, I, I know well that, that is exactly the prophecy that hagi is talking about and, no 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 and okay. i will that also say this with netanyahu, okay. with netanyahu with okay. netanyahu also making common cause with um with yes, because he's right making wing. common cause because the greatest support in america for his country is coming from christian zionists well but i think that's problematic in the end cause with them? well i'm i'm trying I'm to explain sorry? i'm trying to explain because i think what it breeds is a type of of uh singular nationalism in israel which has left jews unsafe the the road so, that could have so been taken believe, with zionists okay. So you we know that there was a strand Israel of Zionist is thought. Okay, we, we, so no, no, understand. not Israel. I'm saying certain elements within Israel, because we know there was Zionist thought, starting in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, where the idea of a, uh, a multi-ethnic, multi-religious democracy could have taken hold. 
folks like Boober yeah, okay. and Hannah Arendt uh, spouses. Well, Instead, we just, have a fascist... Uh, don't uh, be shocked that your child <laughs> has taken your uh, ideas to This is thing. a new debate tactic I have to learn from this one. I have to find a way to make ad breaks happen to the people I'm on call with, too. Illusion. Oh, that means time's oh, time for an ad. Dennis! Time for an ad. I hit it. I hit the ad button. It's weird that you had to cut me off. The Dennis Prager Show. I'm just going to hang out to the music for a while, if you don't mind. <laughs> In two minutes and 45 <laughs> seconds. Oh, I don't know. I think, he might be, I think he might be done with you. Yeah. I get the sense he was. He definitely cut me off. Should we hang on the line to see if he comes back to you? I don't know. That's up to you. I'm just working. Because you're not having real conversations. <laughs> The Dennis Prager Show on the Salem Radio wow. Network returns from break in two minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, well, you got more runway than you thought you might. To be clear, by the way, because we've talked about this before, the guy that Dennis Prager is currently defending, John Hagee, has not just um, said that Hitler was sent by God, but said the Antichrist would be a half Jew homosexual. Um, and he also has done the JQ thing, like the Rothschilds. Uh, like whites being undermined by an international cabal of Rothschilds. Like John, John Hagee is is essentially like a f Nazi, but he he's pro Israel only because again, um, some Christians believe that Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is real, and if you have all the Jews together in the Holy Land, then you can have five people do the hand clap ground touch thing. And then they sacrifice all the Jews, and then Jesus shows up in the middle or whatever. It'll look like third impact can we get a picture of a half jew homosexual well i'm a homosexual and i grew up in a jewish neighborhood even though my ancestry is catholic so i feel like i'm edging there you know what i mean i i know lots of anti-semitic jokes that my jewish high school friends would tell at each other and everyone else does that count can you be half a religion look okay judaism is is cultural ethnic and religious all right thank you yeah look i had a jewish neighbor all jewish neighbors come on come on Hege has claimed Adolf Hitler was born from a lineage of accursed, genocidally murderous half-breed Jews. Citing material from Jewish tradition, he claimed the persecution of Jews throughout history, implicitly including the Holocaust, was due to the Jewish people's disobedience of God. In 2008, Hege claimed that the Antichrist will be a homosexual and partially Jewish, as was Adolf Hitler, and he also claimed in a reference to Jeremiah 16.16, 16, to fishers and hunters, supplements, positive motivation, negative motivation, Effectively, both men were sent by God for the purpose of having Jews from Israel suggest the Holocaust was built by God because most Jews ignored Herzl. I don't think Hitler was gay. Unfortunately, he was. All uh, fascists are gay. Here was his full quote. It was the disobedience and rebellion of the Jews, God's chosen people, to their covenantal responsibility to serve the one true God, Jehovah, that gave rise to the opposition and persecution that they experienced beginning in Canaan and continuing to this very day. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad, I feel in my opinion. Pastor John Hagee, Jerusalem in World War III. I, I, okay, again, we could watch the entire thing. I'm pretty sure that, like, as with many Christians who await the rapture, he believes that World War III is going to happen in, like, a glorious Holy War bloodbath over the Holy Land, and the consequence of it will basically be, like, a bunch of people are going to die, primarily the Jews, because they're the ones he wants to be there at the beginning, like, to the start. And this will be, like, the great conflict that, that precedes uh, the arrival of Jesus Christ in, in the rapture. What does the Bible say about the Russian invasion of Israel? This massive Russian invasion. I love this story. Ezekiel 38, 19, and 20. God says the first thing I'm going to do when those massive armies start invading Israel is treat them to a great earthquake. I'm going to open the ground and swallow a great Lord. And as always, in case you forgot what he looks like, as is the case with all mega evangelical pastors, he does look evil. Like, you could, you could look at him and know that he's evil. Why does he look like Gideon from Gravity Falls? I think it's the other way around. I think Gideon was made to look like him. He believes in the whole seven-year tribulation thing after the rapture, wherein Russia invades Israel and a bunch of worldwide catastrophes occur and only 144,000 Jews survive. Nice. All right, moving on. 
on the Salem Radio Network. Returns from break in one minute and 45 seconds. Why is Salem? Right, we're going to hang on for the one minute, 45 seconds. Um... Do you have clients in your office right now, Ronald Reagan? Salem is short for Jerusalem. Is that is that where the town's name comes from? You guys feeling this bop, by the way? Because I'm, I'm kind of feeling it. The Dennis Prager show. We try to, um, you know, help them. The Dennis Prager show. Guys, I don't know if it's ever going to return from that break. I don't know. The Dennis Prager show returns in five seconds. I should have ran another ad break. Are you kidding me? I, I, it's, it's probably tough. Please. About this product, which relieves pain in <laughs> muscles and joints. I know it. I endorse it. I use it. The Living Martyr uses it. My Dude, wife. Dude, can you imagine what crusty ass boomers are actually listening to this program? Radio is so f- boomer cooked, man. Oh my god, like. Radio has 50 times as much advertisement time as TV does, and TV has infinity more than using the internet with an ad blocker does, and Zoomers get angry when their ad blockers briefly stop working, you know? Who's listening to this shit? Fuses it. In fact, my wife used it before I ever heard of it. That's why I actually agreed to even promote it years ago, because she told me, oh, it's fantastic for her knee pain. It's so good, she sometimes forgets to take it, and then she... Fre- doesn't take and the knee pain comes back. What a f- incredible ad reads, too. I bet this guy's making money hand over fist. Six digit ad buys on these reads. They're so good. Sometimes they're so good, my wife doesn't take them and then her knees hurt. Mm-hmm. Try for three weeks. Doesn't work in three weeks. The bankers say you should cancel your order because it probably won't work for you if it doesn't work in three weeks. Dude, this, this guy's a f- What the f- The incredible... Charisma, you think so, Tempest? Go to relieffactor.com, 1995 for three weeks, that's- Hold on. Relief Factor, 1999. Why 1999? Freedom to live the life you love. Over 1 million customers have chosen our- Oh my f- God. Guys, these are unregulated supplements. I- I assumed they would be just some kind of, like, specific, uh, NSAID plus painkiller. Drug-free health supplements. For those of you who don't know, uh, the FDA does not regulate these. You can do whatever the f- you want. You can tell right here, because it says when it's trying to sell this shit to you, it says, Manufactured in... FDA registered facility. Guys, okay? So the FDA is aware of the existence of the factory that these are produced in, okay? They know the building exists. The FDA, if you you can call the FDA, you can call them and ask. They will confirm that this building exists. We do not operate out of an RV outside of Albuquerque. I feel bad for the people who get like taken in by this shit. I mean, not to say necessarily that it can't work. There are things that are essentially supplements that can help with some stuff. It's just like almost always stuff like this is a scam and is not as helpful as just regular drugs, you know? It's not impossible, you know? Like, how is that not illegal? It's just, you just, yeah, there's like, seriously, look at what Alex Jones gets away with, with his brain force shit, you know? Always remember to take your cum pills, lads. Remember the, um... What's it called? What was the one that I took? Maximum load? Big load? What were, they, what were they called? Where it's like, yeah, but it's mostly zinc, but there's some other stuff in it too. Fish oil? I think fish oil's in it. Yeah. Lock and load. Yeah, DeGero remembers. If you like blast in your girl's face, I mean, I'm not talking like three or four ropes, okay? I'm, I'm talking like a, a, a full-on goddamn facial. A, a full-on goddamn... Like like she's, she's putting a creamy-ass skincare mask on okay you know oh yeah d- take pineapple too or whatever you know make it make it good for her or him realistically him now well would gay guys take lock and load probably i guess anyone could theoretically i'm gay and i took it that's it you should definitely try it 
relieffactor.com, 800-500-8384. You can tell the knee pain stuff is good because um, Dennis Prager didn't take it, and that's why he sounds like he's dying. Okay, so uh, just a final word here. I rarely keep somebody on so long, but I thought that that was valuable. So I just want to say, and this is, God knows, I, I, I thank you for your call and your openness. Thank you. But Can't wait for Sam to unload in this. Oh, you mean the way that you could unload in your girl's face if you got lucky. I'm sorry. Get a lock and load sponsorship. <laughs> sorry. With your views with regard to Israel, it, it, it's not shocking that your son would have participated in anti-Israel demonstrations. <laughs> Sam Cedar's like, I don't feel comfortable associating with this guy who said Hitler was sent by God to hunt us, who thinks the Antichrist is Jewish. And Dennis Prager's like, well, based on your beliefs, I would say your son would turn out to be a liberal. At college. Well, I, I know you wouldn't, and I fully appreciate that, but he, he didn't come from a home that made, made peace with with israel as a national jewish project dude he's so cucked you literally the like you're not a real jew unless you get along with the evangelical mega preacher who thinks the antichrist will be jewish in a way i feel like this is a this is a good reminder of how cucked zionism is conceptually and how little it has to do with judaism you know like this guy's literally like yeah judaism is about fully and uncritically supporting the nation state of israel and in order to do that you have to get along with all these anti-semites you know and if you don't do that you're you're a bad jew basically oh yeah well, I think that's not, I don't think that's true, actually. I mean, my, my, uh, certainly Sam Cedar is Jewish, my, yes. much of my Hebrew school, uh, you know, and I, at that point was more, uh, conservative than, than Orthodox. Uh, but much of my Hebrew, uh, schooling was, was oriented towards I Israel. Many of my, uh, teachers were, um, yeah, but were that's former irrelevant. It's, it's your views. Well, look, you said, but all I'm saying is I'm looking at this as a practical flawed. matter though, uh, Dennis, because as a practical matter, if the part of the Zionist project was to provide a safe home for Jews, I, uh, I, I mean, and surely, you know, this as well. Um, we have Israelis now who are in bomb shelters four times a day and that it has not worked. The peace and security for Jews as a as a single ethno national state has not worked. So this is totally true. And again, this is why I remind people being anti Zionist is absolutely a pro Jewish. Well, it's not necessarily a pro Jewish position. You can be anti Zionist and an anti Semite, right? But I think that there is a form of anti Zionism that is very pro Jewish. And I think a lot of that just stems from the fact that not only, like, again, Zionists will say that Israel is the only safe place in the world for Jews, but then they'll talk about how Israel is constantly under threat and must always be at arms and must conscript all of its citizens and must always be defending and must always blah, 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 because we're surrounded by enemies. We have enemies within, enemies without. And it's like, dog, do you feel safe? Do you feel safer there than a Jew feels in Brooklyn? Because Brooklyn has a lot of Jews. And I'm not saying there aren't problems there. There are. But Jews in Brooklyn don't have to go to bomb shelters four times a day. Jews in Brooklyn are not surrounded by a coalition of Arab states that hate you. So, I don't know. <laughs> you know? I'm just saying is all. I, you know, I, I think that not only is Israel itself, uh, you know, not even to speak of the persecution and, and genocide of the Palestinian people, but, uh, you, know, you know, just for Israelis, just for, for Jewish people. You know, I, I don't think Israel's very safe. And I think that Israel makes safety for Jews globally much, uh, you know, much more precarious because it uh, Israel is very antagonistic to its Arab neighbors and it commits uh, atrocities <laughs> that, that are globally despised. And this leads to a lot of unjustified, wrong, but nonetheless real reprisal against Jews the whole world around. You know? Yeah, it's 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 bad optics. I don't know. Uh, yikes i'm looking at israel and i'm saying yikes so, On that, so therefore I'm, you uh, believe jews would be more secure if they weren't a jewish state and it was just a jewish and muslim state and, and christian 
I mean, I think the, you know... I do, I do think that. I think that things started off really bad, but I think that if Israel... Like, if we could, if we could just right the wrongs and make Israel just a... Just the state that is the Holy Land and have it be democratic and have it be jointly controlled by full citizens of yeah islamic jewish and christian faith uh you know they all lay claim to the holy land right it's their holy land it's the abrahamic religion they all want it you know the only reason christians are okay with israel being jewish is because america knows it controls israel right like christians are okay with jews occupying the holy land because it's kind of on our terms you know they're not like a rogue state though they sure have been acting that way lately it would also lessen the antagonism from the neighboring Arab countries, which would probably be good. Like a council of religions? Yeah, sure, right? Yeah, I, I, I think that would be okay. You know? I, again, I'm not saying it would be easy, but I don't think... I don't think that there's... I, I don't think that in a, it's an acceptable long-term solution to this conflict to go like, no, yet, like, yet yeah, Jews just control that, and the Jews there, you know, are like it's 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 like an America-backed Zionist project, and Israel keeps antagonizing its enemies. And there's like 1.2 billion Muslims in the world, and they just have to be angry about it forever. I don't think that's like a very good long-term solution. Do you oppose two states in principle? I I support whatever whatever helps people the most whatever is practical and possible i don't know in the long term it seems like peace in the middle east kind of relies on every faith having access to jerusalem and, uh, yeah, and, and, there are so few and, christians there okay, well yes yeah, uh, yes of course it's so academic. You, you believe jews would be more secure with majority arab rule I, I, I think absolutely a multi-ethnic uh, uh, society right. could be set up. I mean, listen, this is the same thing okay. that people... No, notice how for Israel, um, Prager is invoking the exact same white nationalist rhetoric that you hear from American white nationalists, where you say, essentially, I think it's okay to let immigrants in, and their response is, oh, so you want this country to be controlled by that group, you know? It is true that if Israel had completely full and open borders, that it would not be Jewish majority for long. But, like, no country on earth has open borders. Like, you know, we're not in the paradise lands just yet. Obviously, that's not, like, what would happen. Like, Israel no longer being an apartheid state would not instantly mean <laughs> that, that it, would, it would then, like, every Muslim in the Middle East would pour into there, you know? Said all about right, South right, Africa. Look, I got to leave you that because we've talked well, then, so long. Okay. Well, uh, Dennis, I really appreciate I you having this conversation. Everyone. He's saying there are more Palestinians than Jews. That's not even true. Hold on. Israel has, it's so tiny. Israel has 9.3 million people. And the, here, demographics, Jews make up about 75% of Israel. 73.5%. Uh, Wait, does this count the Gaza Strip? I don't think it does. So I um, so it would be fifty fifty. Does it count the West Bank? It only counts citizens. Yeah, I guess it'd be about fifty fifty then. It's also worth noting, by the way, that like, you know, if there aren't that many Jews, that sucks, dog. But that doesn't mean you get to do an apartheid state. Like, bro, sorry, you conquered territory that included a larger, like amount of people that aren't your ethnic group that doesn't mean you get to do apartheid forever that'd be like arguing like from south africa like you can't get rid of apartheid the white people in south africa are only like 10 percent. if you got rid of apartheid that means black people would control africa it's like yeah that is how democracy works that is true that, that is how that is i wonder if it's possible in a democratic country to construct a political system that protects the rights of minorities. I wonder if it's possible to do that. Uh, with me. The uh, listener decide. Thank you. But I, I think it, you, you need to be honest with yourself. If you believe that- I am being honest with Zionist myself, Dennis. is a failure. It, it, it is not that surprising. Yeah, keep in mind that 
even though it's been like 30 years since apartheid ended in South Africa, white people still have a massively disproportionate amount of power in South Africa. Land and money, too. So, and that's in spite of the fact that they only make up like 10% of the population there. And black people in South Africa probably had about as much reason to hate uh, white South Africans as uh, uh, um, Palestinians did or do um, Jewish Israelis. So by that logic, it really seems like claims that all the Jewish people would just immediately be like overrun by by like a slight uh, majority of Palestinians are probably overstated. You know, a little bit. And if you have a problem with the Holy Land having more Muslims in it than Jews, there are more Muslims than there are Jews. Like, by a lot. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, by a very large proportion. If we filled the Holy Land with proportional representation from the three, you know, main Abrahamic religions, I say main there to cover my bases in case there's some secret fourth one with eight members that I'm not aware of. It, 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 the Jewish people would be the minority. Your son would have demonstrated against Israel on this campus. Well, I mean, I wouldn't characterize the demonstration uh, St. Petersburg, the... Florida. Corey, oh. hello. Ah. All right. Yes, hello, Dennis. Um... Since October, well, it was fun while it lasted, Sam. October 7th, I've been to four or five Catholic churches for Sunday Mass. All right, hold on. And I'm not one just... time has the priest mentioned in his home. Uh, I guess, uh, oh, he, he left. All right. Reagan hung up. We got yep. the, uh, held over two commercial breaks. I mean, I thought he was taking commercials. I got news for He did get held over two commercial breaks. That is pretty, pretty astonishing, to be sure. Ulet, yes, I do think that. I mean, clearly, the situation as it is right now is pretty violent in Israel, and we need to try something new, and it just seems like, historically, the best way to promote peace is to uh, engage in lots of diplomacy, democratize, get along with people, but also maintain a strong and well-equipped military in case things get rowdy. I'm not arguing that Israel disarm or anything, you know? Uh, like, I, I, you know... Uh, though I, I do wish they'd stop doing the conscription thing, considering the fact that the mandatory IDF shit is basically just, like, free indoctrination from the state. Well, it's not free, but... Oh, you, yeah. know, you gotta really know. Like, I did too. <laughs> I can't believe you got on that long. And he he's... You've spoken to him before, right? Like, he supposedly knows your voice. Well, I, I mean, I don't... You got on for, like, like a second the one time, and he... Uh, he I hung up immediately. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty um, amazing. I mean, it was nice to be able to reach his audience, and uh, yeah. you know, I don't think I, I went super hard, no. but to, to have that long of a time. No, that was good. Clearly, Dennis found something compelling about it for that conversation to have continued for that long. It's a radio show. Like, if if Sam Cedar ever like burst out and went like, "Aha, I've caught you," then uh, they would simply like cut his call. You know. So obviously, like, it could only ever be a conversation. But that was still pretty fun. Uh. <laughs> I feel bad now because my son's not in college. Yeah. He's in elementary school. And your name is but, not Ron. And my name is not Ron. And no wonder. Sam. But Ron is no one of my wonder. nicknames. But, you know, if Dennis wants to avoid this kind of deception, he can just come on the majority report and debate Sam long form without yeah. those kinds of. That's it, lads. It's time. The Dennis Prager Sam Cedar Lollycon debate. This'll this will be the one. This'll be the rumble to end all rumbles, okay? This is some pay-per-view shit. First, Emma... Wait, no, I don't think she would know either. Somebody on the team has to explain to Sam what Lollicon is. Uh, uh, procuring a, um, a, a list of Twitter uh, accounts, all with names like um, Cunny Lover 1488 to show Sam Cedar to sort of prep him for this debate on on the subject with Dennis Prager. <laughs> he would know I've heard him make fun of Dennis over it. Really? Oh, nice. Who do you think would do better in a debate against Dennis Prager, Kyle Kalinske, or Sam Cedar? Um, I, Kyle Kalinske and Sam Cedar are both very good debaters. Um, I think that they, they excel in, in different positions. I think that Kyle Kalinske is better at debating people who are ostensibly on his side. Uh, people who he can lead in with friendly affirmation 
while building a case and then confidently and in a friendly way making argument after argument after argument after and i think that sam cedar well well he's certainly good at that is much better with direct antagonism you know um I, I i think that um sam cedar can sometimes come across a little bit patronizing when he's talking to people who are largely on his side and i think that kyle kalinsky while plenty good at, at being antagonistic sam cedar's just really good at it you know so I think um, I, I think they're both excellent. So well, Dennis Prager obviously is an antagonist. So Sam Cedar in that case. Also, since um, you know they're both Jewish, and uh, Dennis bases a lot of his dumb shit opinions in his like fake Judeo-Christian bullshit. So that would probably be like another angle, I guess.